So David Green, the skipper of the side, getting that credit that I was just saying a moment ago he perhaps hasn't had during the season. Winner Manly lead by eight points to two. The conversion from directly in front of the post should be an easy one for Warren Green. Uh, Pete, you've got a score in the studio. Yeah, I have been uh, the soccer in the Premier League uh, preliminary final. Half time, it's Mount Cravat 1, Grange Thistle 0. Mount Cravat 1, Grange Thistle 0. Half time in the preliminary final. OK, he's kicked the goal from right in front. Winner Manly lead 10-2, and here's a replay of the last try. Into a front-on shirt front from Kelvin Kerr. A real body slam tackle. Bounced away, but hit the ground. Played back to Miles. He makes the break from dummy half. One-handed pass back to Mel Green. He's got support on his left in David Green. And David Green's going to go over and score. Next to the post. So two tries to win a Manly and it's all green at the moment. Warren Green and David Green, the try scorers. And Brad, it's significant that uh, South are missing tackles. Yes, South missed 15 tackles so far in the match, Peter, which is uh, pretty unbelievable, really, in a grand final. Certainly is. Ten points to two the score. Win a Manly, the hot favourite, four to one on favourites before this game. So you'd have to be uh, happy. Early lead that they had. Here's Wally Lewis making a break down the blind side. Slips a beautiful pass back inside to Ian French, but he's caught about five metres short of the halfway line. David Wright, how's it look from there? Well, Peter, once again, just holding off Lewis for a second. Ash Lumbey only just took his eye off him and away went Lewis. And of course, once he's gone through, we've got Mel Green away again, Peter. Yes, it's Mel Green making a midfield break. He's got Brett French there, but he throws a shocking pass. He tried for the long pass out to Terry Butler. Butler's picked it up. He might score. Well, he's close, but no, the referee's whistle's gone. Call a pass, Peter. It was, yes. It was a dreadful pass. Really, that was a try bomb because he had Brett French directing traffic, really, right next to him. He tried to throw a Wally Lewis-style pass over the head of a South player. It went nowhere near Terry Butler, and that was a shocker. South are leaving a gap in the middle there. They've uh, been penetrated time and time again, and uh, it looks so easy for them manly, and they're backing up. Their tails are up. This will be a vital 10 minutes for South. If Wyndham score again, they're in trouble. And this is exactly what South did in that major semi-final. They tend to lose concentration, and when they do... When a Manly capitalised not just with one try, but a spate of scoring, and uh, South will really have to pull themselves together. That's where I think they really miss someone like Bruce Aspel, who used to really lead them by example and get those forwards going. Here's a good break, though, made by Halverson, trying a little dummy after the scrum was won by South, and he's about 30 metres out. Plays it back now to Belcher. Belcher, one of the few players who's shone so far for South in this game. Stepping and weaving up towards the 10 metre line. Plays it back to Sully. It goes to Lumby. Lumby tries to fend his way through, but the defence too tight for that. David Green over the top and driving in underneath was Kajewski. Played back now. It's Kelvin Kerr at dummy half. Gets it to Brad Sully, then to Kellaway. And Kellaway's taken in a combined tackle right on the halfway line. David. Yeah, Mark Nesco uh, warming up here on the sideline, Peter. So it looks like there could be a change for South in the next couple of min minutes. Here's Meninga. Putting a raking punt downfield, just picked up before it went to the touch by Warren Green, who's had a fine game so far. He's been chased by Jackson, gets away from the dive tackle, attempted by Halverson, but is caught this time by Kelvin Kerr. Good run, though, by the winger. About 13, 15 metres out from the winner Manly line, it's Dowling linking with Lewis, and Lewis goes to ground in the tackle just inside the quarter. The tackle count will restart. It's been touched by South in centre field now, 10 to 2, winner Manly lead. And it's Kajewski, put the ground just inside his quarter. He'll play it back to David Green. It goes infield to Peter Dawes, the perfect link. Gets the ball away quickly to Gary Coyne. And Coyne goes to ground in a tackle by Kelvin Kerr. David Green gets it back to Dowling, taking it straight and out. Up the middle, he's broken away. He's gone straight through the tackle of Tibby Abbott. He's got support with him. Throws a tackle as he goes to ground, and Abbott picked it up. Great tackle by Kerr. Really got him round the ankles. He looked like shooting away. So the fortune's changing quickly and it's South back in possession again. The ball played back to Lumby. Lumby runs up to uh, about the 10 metre line in Wynnum's territory. Throws the pass now, comes back inside to Sully. It goes to Kellaway. Kellaway running like a back and he's broken through. He's only the fullback to beat. He'll beat him, I think. He's struggling for the line. But Brian Walsh again. What a magnificent tackle. Great run by Kellaway. And they've raked the ball back and play the ball. Winner Manley have got it. Bad luck well, to South again. Fault. They should really have got that ball. It was a try, looking like it was on. And Wally Lewis takes the ball out, gets a bit of a knee from Lumby as he took the ball out, 10 metres from his own line. But two tries the Magpies have bombed now. Belcher had men outside and elected to go on his own, was caught for a penalty for a double movement. And here's Wyndham throwing the ball out wide again. A beautiful pass comes out to Warren Green. He's only got the uh, half-back to beat the cover defence. Sully cuts him down. Lovely tackle by Brad Sully. Little Trojan. They're still in trouble. South, Wynnum Manley all in position, ready to go. And they're lined out right across the field on the halfway line. It comes out now. 
and racing the ball up. The South defence moves very quickly up, though, and it's David Green who's caught in the fifth tackle in centre field. It's thrown back now from Coyne to Gene Miles. Decides to run on his own. He shapes the kick, but is upended by Kelvin Kerr. That's the end of the tackle count. Okay. Outside the quarter line. Plays it back to David Green. He weaves away from the dummy half position to the blind side. Tackled by his opposite, Eddie Muller. Played back now on the open side from Miles. It goes to Dawes. Out to Coyne. He's tackled, but gets it back to Dawes. Quick hand. Three. It goes to Walsh. Here's a chance. It goes on to Brett French. French gets it to Butler. Butler's showing some speed as he goes down the sideline. He's hit a kick. It's high in the air. Belcher underneath it. Walsh comes through under him, but Belcher takes it acrobatically. His ankle tapped by Brian Walsh. He's lost and the he ball goes to ground. He lost the ball when he was tackled. Knocked on. So South's in trouble once again. A scrum right in centre field in their territory. Winner Manley's ball to the scrum. David. Yes, Peter. Uh, very unusual to uh, hear Wayne Bennett yell out from the bench. But uh, he was most upset then when Hubie Abbott, the ruck before that big break was made by Winner Manley, he was yelling at Hubie Abbott to get back out into the centres. And ha Abbott was the one who was having a loaf on the blind side. Here's Gene Miles making a break out wide. Gets the ball out to Warren Green. He pulls the ball in a high pass. That's the step and run back inside. But the cover defence picks him up. Still win a man, he looked dangerous though. They lead 10 points to two. There's only five minutes to go till half time and they're pressing again. Here's a good run by Gene Miles. Fins one, runs across towards the post but is pulled down about five metres out. South have to hold the line. It's David Green, gets the ball out to Dowling. Dowling launches himself to the line. He's stopped by two or three defenders. Well, they're in trouble here, South. There's a gap a mile wide. Only one gap. South player there. On the right hand there. side, David Green trying to get it back. It's played forward, it's a try. The ball played forward. And it's Dowling who did it. Pandemonium breaking up in the terraces. Clever play. The ball played forward. Dowling just played it forward. Put his hand on the ball. Referee Manson on the spot. Ruling the try. Well, at 16 points to two of this conversion goes over and it should and South in lots of trouble. And uh, Wynnum capitalising on the efforts. Very clever play by Dowling. Tapping the ball forward. And uh, they've only been up there three times. They've got three tries. And uh, South will be almost in a couple of times, but almost is not good enough. And the Premiership uh, looks very, very... Uh, in the keeping of the winner, Manly boys, the present time. David, how'd you say that? Well, Peter, uh, as you uh, call it, or as uh, Phil said, that uh, South was certainly in trouble out wide. That plenty of players in around the ruck. And, uh, of course, the strength of Dowling, he nearly scored it uh, just prior to that. But he, uh, he was just too strong and too powerful to, uh, to go across playing it forward. Warren Green now to take the kick. Raises the flag. So Winner Manley now leads 16 points to two. And there's only three and a half minutes to go in the first half. Half time. Winner Manley 16, South 2, the statistics of the first half of the 1984 Grand Final from Brad Tallon. Winham three tries, one, each, one to Warren Green in the 10th minute, David Green in the 27th minute, and Greg Dowling in the 35th minute, and Warren Green has kicked two goals from three attempts. To South, Mal Meninga, their sole point scorer with a penalty goal in the 21st minute, he's kicked one from two. The penalties favour South 5 to 4, with scrum penalties 1 all. The scrums also favour South 5-3, although Wyndham's hooker David Green has won the only tight head of the match. Lost ball. Wyndham have lost the ball on 10 occasions to South 5. Missed tackles. South have missed 21 tackles in the first half to Wyndham's 8. And kicks in general play, South 9, Wyndham 5. Of those South 9 kicks in general play, all have gone straight to the Wyndham player. No kicks finding touch or resulting in them getting possession back. The first scorers for South, number three, Mal Meninga. For Wynnum, number five, Warren Green. Well, Cyril, before I do your summary, Dave, you've just seen the players come off the field. They're, how are they looking? Are there any obvious cuts? Or uh, does South look a beaten side already? I wouldn't think they're beaten, Peter. They're certainly concerned. The looks on the faces of the uh, South players certainly show that they were very concerned. And why wouldn't they be at the uh, scoreline at the moment, 16-2? Uh, but uh, certainly not beaten. Uh, Wyndham, on the other hand, they seem to be doing a little bit more talking as they walked off. Dowling was looking around, patting each other uh, as they walked off, and they were still very businesslike. So uh, I think uh, South very concerned, and Wyndham Manley still with their mind on the job. Cyril, 16-2 uh, at half time. I didn't think it would be this one-sided at this stage. Um, South midfield defence seems to be a bit of a problem. When you say, you know, the game hasn't appeared as one-sided as that, South had their opportunities to score and they didn't score. Mm. They had two great opportunities and had they got one of them even, they'd have been much closer than this. But Wynnum, on the other hand, they've scored their, two of their tries for a long way out. They really were, were clever play and some good passing and uh, they found the gap in the centre of the field and they've had three opportunities to score and they've scored them. It was surprising the last one when Dowling tapped the ball forward with people around him and jumped on it. And um, 
really the game's in a lot more even than that but of course it's a big lead to get and South would really have to work very hard to peg that lead back against the team who obviously are playing well and they are playing well right from the start they look good Lewis they've got a clever pass away to Green on the wing and what a good game he's had Warren Green best game we've seen him have uh, French that made a good run then, and this is an inkling of what was to come. But suddenly South turned the defence into attack, and Belcher made a great run. Looked as if he might score, but couldn't get his pass away. And he went over the line all right, but referee Manson quite correctly ruled a double movement, and South had lost the try. And to make matters worse, Winner Manley came straight back, went straight into the, the field. Lewis made a great break to Ian French to Warren Green, and it was 4 0 to Winner Manley, when it could have easily been 4 0 to South. Uh, and then uh, Winner really got into their stride. Shortly after that, uh, they, but prior to, just before that, however, South came back again and, and Meninga kicked the goal to make it 4-2 and South took in the game. But then Winner Manley scored a good try. Gene Miles, who was quite early, suddenly broke clear, threw a pass to Mel Green. Now, probably the try was done so quickly, not too many noticed what a wonderful take it was by Green. It was low to the ground. He scooped it up absolutely miraculously. Got it away to David Green, who backed up, and that's a, a one feature where Winner Manley are putting it over South. They're backing their players up very, very well. It was 10 points to 2 with 27 minutes gone. Kellaway looked like bringing South back into it. He made a great run. He must have run something like 40 metres. Beat the defence man after man. Got caught right in the line. And a tremendous tackle. And we got to play the ball. Lewis took it away from him to play the ball. And Winner Manley were on the trot again. And away they went with some brilliant attacks. South was completely at sixes and sevens. Winner Manley, one felt could have scored anywhere. They had four men over to one South fellow on the side. Looked like a matter of a pass would get a try. But Dowling played it forward and went under the post and 16-2 they were in trouble. Meninga had a chance right in half time to make it closer but he didn't convert and it was 16 points to two. <laughs> There's a, a streaker has come onto the ground and uh, has dropped his pants to the crowd and uh, very smartly has been seized upon by two young uh, policemen who probably were, were playing in the under 18s I'd say. They look like police they're from academy the police game. academy team and a fine tackle was made by one young constable I might say. I think Wayne Bennett should snap him up. Anyway, after that Murph, Bruce Aspel, I notice, is sitting over there in the dugout of the South Camp, and he must be a pretty unhappy man with a 16-2 scoreline against him. I notice he's smoking, which he doesn't normally do, or he never used to do in the old days. Uh, I think they need a Bruce Aspel there, Dave, at the moment. Well, certainly uh, South lacking uh, something out in that back line where Winner Manley seemed to be making plenty of breaks out wide, Bruce. That's right, David. We've been leaving a few gaps out there and they've been capitalising on it. We, uh, we thought they would have been doing a little bit more kicking. They're not. Our wing is dropping back and consequently uh, Lewis and his uh, ability to read the game so well has been taking advantage of that. Where do you think Stouts are going to have to uh, improve if they're going to get uh, on with the game in the second half? They're 14 points deficit at the moment. Uh, in what areas do you think they're going to have to uh, concentrate in the second half? Well, we certainly have to concentrate on our defence out wide. That's where we're, they've been making the big yardage, and that's one area that we have to look at tightening up. Other than that, I think we're doing enough enough attacking flair to score tries. It just hasn't come our way as yet. So, uh, you know, the second half might be a different story. A couple of uh, opportunities in that first half where uh, Belcher uh, was penalised for a double movement, which looked like an obvious double movement, and then uh, later on with Callaway going very close. So uh, had South got uh, points on the board for those, it could have been a different story at, uh, at half-time. Well, that's right. When Gary uh, was penalised for that double movement, it could have been a different ball game from that point because Winner Manley had scored and uh, that try to South could have been the difference. And uh, what about the attacking side? Uh, it seems to me that uh, Hubie Abbott and even Mal Meninga aren't getting out quite wide enough. Did you find that a problem with Mal when playing in the centres with him that he, he tended to uh, drift in a little bit around the ruck too much? Well, Malcolm tries to get in and involve himself in the game and that sort of thing, but, uh, you know, they just have to get out wide and concentrate on that, that's all. And uh, how do you see uh, containing uh, Winner Manley in the second half, of course? Uh, South must uh, close up their defence even around the middle of the ruck where they have scored tries close to the middle. Uh, how do you actually go out and uh, contain that Winner Manley side now uh, around the middle of the ruck? Well, you know, I think Winner Manley's going to do a lot of kicking this half. Uh, so it, it's, just, it's just a question of our blokes having 100% commitment and going out and tackling everyone that's got the ball. What about the importance of this uh, first 10 minutes? Do you think South have got to score early? Oh, that's for sure. I, I believe they have to score early to have some sort of... Uh, some sort of bearing on the game because of this present winner Manley's got a stranglehold on it. Uh, you know, I, I'm not saying South can't come back. I think if they score a try early, well, it's anyone's ball game from there. OK, well, thanks very much, Bruce. And uh, shortly, uh, Peter, I should have uh, Johnny Payne with us and uh, John was in the dressing room at Wynnum uh, with uh, Des Morris uh, a couple of moments ago, so we, we should be able to get some idea of uh, the feeling in the, the winner Manley dressing room.